Hello, we are team 40 and our project topic is image colorization using deep learning. Our team is comprised of Adya Abhyankar, Adil Khan and myself, Prathamish Pandit. I will be going over the introduction and motivation for our project and the data sets that we have used. There are several solutions available for the image colorization problem. A lot of research is going on in this field to obtain colorized images that are as realistic as possible. Color of objects such as cars, clothes, etc., can be different from the ground truth, but can still be considered accurate. However, the challenge lies in accurately colorizing standard components like skin tone, eyes, hair, nature, and sky. Our goal with this project is to produce colorized images from grayscale ones that seem natural to the human eye. In our implementation, we propose a method for image colorization. We pre-process colored images to create grayscale images, which are used as an input for a model. We then train our model with these grayscale images and as input and the original colored images as output. Upon training the model, we would be able to generate RGB images for, with a reasonable understanding of color within its inherent texture. We have used three data sets for training and validation of our model. We first use the LFW base dataset to train our baseline model. The model weights were initialized with pre-trained weights from BGG16 trained on the ImageNet dataset. We later used 50,000 images from the CIFAR dataset to train our final model as it contained images of smaller size. Once we obtained decent results from this, we decided to train our model using 20,000 images from the ImageNet dataset. For implementing this, we tried two different approaches. We first used a transfer learning approach as our baseline that uses features obtained from the image after providing it to the pre-trained model to make predictions using a CNN. We later used an autoencoder that initially, through a series of CNNs and downsamplings, learns a reduced dimensional representation of the data, and then using CNNs and upsamplings is able to regenerate colored images. Now, Adil shall explain our baseline implementation. Okay, so I'll be explaining about the baseline of this model. And for the baseline, we've used transfer learning. So this involves two networks, a feature network and a shallow net. So the input is a grayscale image and the final output is a colored RGB image. The first step of this approach is to express is that the grayscale image is given to the pre-trained BGG model. And from this, the hyper columns are extracted. Now a hyper column of a pixel is a collection of all the activation values for all the convolutional layers about that, about that pixel. So these hyper columns contain a lot of information about the image and can be used as features for image colorization. So they are given as input to the shallow network. The shallow network will take these hyper columns as input and this shallow network will be trained to predict the UV channels of the image. We train only the UV channels and not the Y channel because the Y channel is only the intensity and that can be replaced by the grayscale images that we had initially produced. So combining the grayscale images with the UV channels, we get the final predictions. The loss function used here is the mean squared error between the UV channels of the true image and the predicted image. The results obtained by the baseline can be seen here. As we can see, the colorized image starts getting a grayish, a grayish color. This is because of the model learning the skin tones and that is why it starts turning gray in, uh, brown in color however we realized that there were several issues with this model the main problem was that since we were using hyper columns which are of dimensions 224 by 224 this method was this model was very computationally expensive to train even after training for 10 12 epochs and having our batch size restricted to two images the image the model could learn only a few brownish skin tones moreover we also realized that in order for this model to learn the entire color mapping it requires two to three days of training due to this hyper parameter optimization also becomes impossible because any small change requires the entire network to be retrained in order to overcome this we decided to go ahead with auto encoders which require a lot less memory and turn out to be better for this application the auto encoders will be explained in the slides ahead
so this is our final model uh, which is the auto encoder so as we all know that uh, auto encoders try to uh, reconstruct the input image so uh, the auto encoders are used in different image segmentation problems so we thought that it would be a good choice to use this uh, in the image colorization problem as it is necessarily the similar task that we are trying to do so these are our st uh, steps in our implementation so the first is image pre processing so for the uh, imagenet data set the images were of the were of larger size so we first had to resize the images so we tried uh, resizing it to 224 and then 128 but it produced uh, distorted uh, images as it required a uh, larger latent layer si latent layer size for the model so our final model is trained uh, on the images of size 64 by 64 then we normalized the images the images were then converted to grayscale which was the input for our model so the next is model training so the autoencoder model uh, we trained it for different number of epochs like 10 15 and 30 and our results mentioned in the mentioned in the slides below are based on 30 epochs we used adam optimizer and um, mean squared error as a as our loss function now uh, then we performed evaluation on the trained model and um, for evaluation we uh, fed the images which were not uh, shown to the training data before so this is our basic model architecture so encoder takes the grayscale image as its input and it produces a compressed uh, uh, image output and which is then given to the decoder and then the decoder uh, produces the output which is the rgb image so uh, this is the basic architecture of the encoder uh, for the uh, cfar data set uh, uh, model which we had trained um, model which ha which we had trained on the cfar data set so it in so it took the input image of size uh, 32 by 32 and then there were se several convolutional layers and it produced a co compressed out single layer output so this is the basic uh, architecture of the decoder so it uh, took the output of the encoder as uh, its input and then it produced a uh, uh, RGB image as its output. So these are some of the results that we obtained on the CFAR data set. Uh, these are some of the results that we obtained on the ImageNet data set. So uh, after observing the results, uh, we uh, came to know that the uh, autoencoder model uh, performed better uh, than the baseline model uh, which had hypercolumns in it in less uh, amount of time and less number of epochs uh, but in this we can see some flaws as well so the reconstructed images uh, have a different color tone also we can see in the car image output that some parts of the car are colored red so that means it is difficult to learn the color of such objects which can uh, be present in different colors also in the ship image we can see a major difference in the shades of blue that is the actual image is more subtle uh, and the reconstructed image has more brighter tones uh, so these are uh, some of the references of our data set that we used uh, the of, of our models that we and our of our models that we trained thank you